welcome to Rich's Tech. Myself, Karthik Punnaswamy. I am glad that you guys have completed uh, successfully the basics of object-oriented programming, the OOPS, OOPS concept uh, so far. And this is the time where we are going to check our knowledge, where we can revisit um, the lessons what we learned so far. And here I have some frame some of the questions where you guys can try it out. So I'll be reading through this question and then you can test your knowledge and then accordingly you can revisit the previous videos if you want to uh, double check if you want to go in detail about the concept let's get started so this is basically oops concepts where we have the knowledge test so let me go through the questions so first one is what is a class in java language it's a blueprint of an object it's a blueprint of a land a blueprint of a building yes you are right it's a blueprint of an object what does a class contains in java language Variables, methods, constructors, none of the above. Right. So a class contains variables and also methods and also constructors. That's right. And choose the correct answers. Uh, variables in a class is to hold the value of the data. Val variable variables can't be inside the class. Methods in a class is to execute some functionality. Okay. So variables in a class is to hold the value of data. That is right. Variables can't be inside the class. No. Variables can be, should be inside the class. So this is not the right answer. And methods in a class is to execute some functionality. That is correct. Because when you want to execute some functionality, you're writing a method. Right? So that's what it is. What is an object in Java language? So uh, object doesn't exist in Java language. Object is an instance of a class in Java. Object is not an instance of a class in Java. None of the above. So, object is an instance of a class in Java. That is the right answer. Choose the right answers. Object is not related to a class. Whatever a class contains, the related object also contains the same. Objects can be related to real-time world. None of the above. You are right. Whatever a class contains, the related object also contains the same thing. Because object is an instance of a class. So, it contains the same whatever the class contains. And object is can be related to a real time world. That is right. What does an object contains in Java? A state, behavior, state and behavior, none of the above. You are right. So object contains state and behavior. Both it contains, right? And what happens internally during the statement? Uh, let's say if you have a statement called red stack, R1 is equal to new red stack off. Okay. And these are the answers we have. Let's go through one by one. So when you execute this program with registec r1 is equal to new registec new registec off. So the first option is using the new keyword jvm creates an object in heap memory. Using the registec constructor jvm allocates the memory to this object. Then jvm creates object reference value r1 in a stack memory. That is correct. So all these steps will happen one by one in a sequential order. So basically whenever we have a statement like this then JVM actually creates an object in the heap memory by using the keyword new and then it is going to create a constructor meaning like using this constructor it is going to allocate the memory and then based on this equal sign equal symbol it is going to assign this variable um, r1 to the memory where uh, the object holds All right which keyword is used to create an object in java never news new obj object none of the above you are right. New. New is the keyword in order to create an object in a class. Where does object gets created and stored? Inside a class, heap, stack, both heap and stack, not in heap, not in stack, none of the above. You are right. Object always gets created and stored in heap memory. Where does object reference gets created? Inside a class, heap, stack, both heap and stack, not in heap, not in stack, none of the above. Object reference always gets created in the stack. That's correct. Choose the right answers. Heap is a memory area to store the objects. Stack is a memory area to store the objects. Heap is a memory area to store the object references. Stack is a memory area to store the object reference. None of the above. You are right. So heap is a memory area to store the objects and object reference are stored in stack. So answer is 1 and 4. Okay, what are all the OOPS concepts? So inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, encapsulation, 
none of the above all of the above so basically the answer is all of the above because inheritance polymorphism abstraction encapsulation all these come under hoops concept what is inheritance in java an object acquires the properties and behaviors from another class an object acquires the properties and behavior from near class an object acquires the properties and behavior from its parent class an object acquires the properties and behaviors from its child class none of the above so the spelling is wrong um, please apologies for that the spelling for the object yeah you are right so the answer is an object acquires the properties and behavior from its parent class choose the right answer parent class inherits from child class child class inherits from parent class none of the above always child class inherits from the parent class right and why inheritance is needed in java so what is the advantage or what is the requirement to have inheritance in java so basically we have code stability code coverage code reusability so the answer is code reusability because of the inheritance we can reuse the same code and we don't need to write or rewrite the same code so inheritance is of which type is it a has a relationship is a relationship no relationship that's right inheritance is kind of a is a relationship choose the right answers so multiple inheritance is a class inherits from uh, inherits more than one base class multi level inheritance is a class inherits from another class which itself is a subclass of some other base class and all of the above that's right all of the above because multiple inheritance is a class which inherits from one base class if it is multi level it means like more than one level it is going to inherit from the different classes so in java a has has a relationship is also known as contribution composition an instance of one class has reference to an instance of another class that's right that's a composition has a relationship is called composition and composition is nothing but an instance of one class has a reference to instance of another class what are the different types of inheritance in java single multiple multi level hierarchy all of the above yeah the answer is correct all of the above what is polymorphism in java multiple classes multiple objects ability of an object to be behave in many forms none of the above that's right poly is many morphism means forms so ability of an object to behave in many forms what are the types of uh, polymorphism in java static dynamic non poly none of the above you are right so we have static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism choose the correct answers static polymorphism is related to compile time and dynamic is related to compile time dynamic is related to run time none of the above right static means compile time and dynamic means run time so these are the two answers so what is overriding same method name with same argument type same method name with different parameters or the signatures none of the above so overloading and overriding are the important concepts which we have seen already and overloading means a same method or uh, name but with different uh, parameters or the signatures now the question is about what is overriding same method name uh, as well as signature meaning the arguments passed and the written type are same same method name with different number of arguments none of the above that's right same method name as well as the signature meaning the arguments passed and the written type are same right that is called overriding now let's go to abstraction so what is abstraction displaying the essential parts and hiding the internal implementation hiding the essential parts and displaying the internal implementation none of the above right displaying the essential parts and hiding the internal implementation in abstraction we don't need to know worry about how it is actually internally implemented we didn't we need to know only the essential parts that is why displaying the essential parts and hiding the internal implementation the next question is what are the rules for abstraction uh if a class is defined as abstract then it should uh it should must have only abstract methods if a class is defined as abstract then it should must have only non abstract methods if a class is defined as abstract then it may have both abstract and non abstract methods if a method is defined as abstract and then its class should be an abstract you are right so if a class is defined as abstract then it can have both uh, abstract and non abstract may it, it may or may not have both abstract and non abstract methods and if a method is abstract uh, then the class should be an abstract these are the two thumb rules for abstraction now let's get into the encapsulation so what is encapsulation 
process of binding variables process of binding methods process of binding variables and methods into a single entity and none of the above you are right process of binding variables and methods into a single entity single entity choose the right answer encapsulation is data hiding only encapsulation is abstraction only encapsulation is data hiding plus abstraction none of the above that's right encapsulation means both data hiding and abstraction and what are the advantages of abstraction data security code enhancement easily longer execution time none of the above you are right advantage of abstraction is data security because we are hiding the uh, internal implementation and code enhancement easily that is also correct but the disadvantage of abstraction is like taking longer time to execute so this is not the right answer so data security and code enhancement are uh, the advantages of abstraction and how to achieve data hiding in java using the public keyword using the default keyword using private keyword and none of the above that's right now to uh, hide the data we have to use the private keyword that is how we can able to achieve the data hiding in java let's go and submit this page uh, let us see the score yeah we got 30 out of 30 so these are the answers guys if you guys want to take a note of it please take a note of it You can pause the video and you can watch uh, the answers as well. So you will get to know what is the right answers at the end of this video. You can cross verify yourself. So this is just to um, test our knowledge what we have uh, learned so far. And if you guys feel that you want to refresh again, then go back to the same videos and then you can uh, go ahead and you can watch the videos to get deeper into that before we proceed into the next upcoming sessions basically this helps you to understand where you are on each concept basically this has been framed these questions are framed based on the experience on the real time world when you are working on the real time projects so this is very important to understand how the object oriented programming works So hopefully you guys um, have achieved uh, whatever we learned so far. I'm I'm more than happy to see your comments over there, based on what you have understood and how the lessons are going on, and that will really help me to um, start improve myself. I really appreciate your feedback. So please go ahead and submit your comments over the comment section. And if you guys like this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you guys haven't subscribed to our channel, please go and subscribe, and that will really help us. And also please um, share it with your friends uh, and I will see you in the next video guys. Until then, bye bye from Karthik. Punaswami.